as an artist, do you find it difficult to find high quality images that are accessible, usable and free? Are you wondering if you're even allowed to use certain images or if you need permission from the photographer? Yeah, it doesn't make the art journey very enjoyable. It could even take away from your creative process. So let me help you with that. In this video, I'll discuss where I go to find my reference photos. Also discussing other resources you can tap into. We're going to go into Canva so I can show you how I prepare my reference photos. And as a little bonus, I'm going to give you a little sneak peek about the painting that I'm currently working on. I'm just going to wait for my special guest to leave. It's an orange tabby. He's about six, seven months old. Get out. You had your drink. You can go now. Move, move, move your butt cheeks. Go, go, go. So where do I go? I have three different places that I like to go and I want to tell, take you to all three and I'm going to show you the process that I went through to get these reference photos for the current painting project. I have a bunch of stuff bookmarked so I don't always have to type it in and go and find it again. I find it a lot easier and I have a bookmark on that bookmark shelf there or whatever you want to call it, the bar uh, that's called Art on YouTube. And that's where I keep most of my things that are related to making videos. So we're going to first one, Pexels, which is a great place, pexels.com. I'm going to link it all in the description, by the way, I'm not sponsored by any of these. And here I already typed in what I'm looking for. I'm looking for poppies in field. Okay. So I have a bit of an idea of what I want and I'm just going to be scrolling down. And then I realized I need to put a filter on here because I want the orientation to be vertical. I want it to be portrait because I know I've got to have my canvas that way. So that's what I've initially looked for. And I am just gonna be seeing what it comes up, right? All of these are free. So these persons that submit the, the photos for this website, they gave up their copyrights basically. So you can go ahead and take these videos and download them. So I already actually spotted one here. Um, okay, making sure that my brightness is up. Now I really already like was drawn towards the picture that I just kind of hovered upon but I'm going down because I'm trying to find, you know, I have an idea in my mind and I'm just going to be searching and I'm going to get inspiration and I want to see, okay, what kind of photos are out here? I don't want any humans in it. I already knew it was going to be a landscape. So I saw one that jumped out at me immediately. So I went back to that one and it's this photo here and I decided to just download it immediately and I'll come back to that later. Now this other one here, I was very interested in as well, similar, but a different kind of color palette. So I decided to download that one as well. And I'm just gonna continue on looking. I just wanna get inspiration. So I might download a bunch of photos and then I might decide not to use them later on. I just wanna get inspiration right now uh, for a composition that I have in mind that I wanna put together. Now I decided to change it to a Remembrance Day poppies just to see if something else would pop up there because Remembrance Day is you know, very specific to Canada. The poppies are a very important part of that. And I will go into um, a video a little bit more in depth about that one I'm actually going to present the painting so stay tuned for that obviously you can see iStock down here it's sponsored those are paid photos and if you want to you can definitely do that as well I'm going to talk a little bit about other resources later on though so yeah again scrolling down seeing if there's anything in there that really jumped out at me that I thought would add to what I already had or give me ideas and most of these photos are pretty decent quality. So that's why I like to go here. Well, I felt I was done here. I'm going to go over to the next uh, website, which is um, Pixabay. Also free. You can just go there and I do the same thing. Poppies in field. I'm going to go and search. Obviously, there is some eye stock stuff that pops up first. I'm going to change the orientation to horizontal, not the horizontal, sorry, excuse me, to vertical. Let's see what pops up in here. Beautiful photos of poppies for sure. If I ever wanted to go back and do a little bit more of a study on the actual flower, there are some really good photographs here that I could use. So it's just a matter of scrolling, looking, what is important to me? What do I have as a vision? What is speaking to me? 
and downloading that what I think might benefit my painting or my idea. And as you can see, these are really nice photos. If you go into Google search, you could be scrolling and searching for hours. So I'm done here. I'm going back up. I decided, you know what, let's add horizontal because I don't want to just limit myself. There might be photos that are horizontal that I could still use parts of that I find interesting that could enhance my painting. So I did want to limit myself, but if you really want to not overwhelm yourself, just stick with one particular orientation. Sometimes I find it difficult because not all photos are well lit, but these photos are really great. Sometimes animals, especially if they're taken by somewhat more, um, you know, hobby photographers, they sometimes have bad lighting, but you kind of take it for what it is, right? These are free, so you just kind of have to weed through it. I'm changing the um, search here. I want to put Remembrance Day in front of it, if I can spell. <laughs> and see if there's anything else that pops up that kind of piques my interest, that gives me inspiration, that makes me go like, yeah, I want to add that in there. Obviously, you're going to see a little bit more like, you know, soldier's graves or even like you see the silhouettes that like we just went past the silhouettes of soldiers there, the poppies that you see on Remembrance Day, wreaths, ceremonies. And you can see here veterans. Obviously, I'm not going to go for people in this painting, but it kind of gives me kind of the feel and the mood, you know, like art is also a lot of emotion. So I'm looking for that as well. I decided to put that on vertical just in case I missed something. So here you have some really cool silhouettes of soldiers. I was thinking about maybe incorporating that into the painting, but I wasn't 100% sure about that yet. But yet again, I'm just trying to find inspiration. I'm just trying to look at things that pop up that I could use. Some of these are on a transparent background, which is really cool because that makes it a little easier if you want to make a composition inside of Canva. So you could always add, you know, transparent background after, like in your search bar there, just to, um, you know, get that. Or you could take these photos into Canva and just use their background remover. And then it's a little bit easier to make your own composition to layer things over top of one another. But it's not foolproof, just so you know. <laughs> And I, my eye kind of was drawn towards this particular photo. I kind of like that as well. Um, changing the size, make it a little bit bigger, download it. You can start immediately in Canva if you want. I just download it and then I will import them all together when I'm done. But uh, I thought for just like the actual like bright proportions, colors, and just the way that a flower looks, I wanted to add that photo as well. Let's move on to Unsplash that uh, now again poppies in field and giving it the same search um giving it the same search command and i'm just going to go down i think what the plus in the corner there would indicate that you would have to pay for that so with unsplash um a lot of the images are free but some of them aren't so you got to make sure that you are aware of that now there wasn't a whole lot on unsplash that i really uh, that really stood out to me. So I, I just, sometimes I give myself a time frame. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be on here no longer than 10, 15 minutes. And if I don't find it, move on. Because otherwise I get stuck and lost. Now I'm changing the uh, search command here to Remembrance Day, Canada, obviously, just to see what comes up with that. Like I might have missed some sort of thing that could give me inspiration. So obviously you see like the RCP, you see the Canadian flag, you see just typical Canadian things. I changed it to poppies because that was just too generally Canadian. So, and I must say it just didn't give a whole lot, right? I moved right back up. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm done. I think we're going to move on now. So we're going to go to Canva and we're going to import these photos. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about other options that you can tap into. Okay. So these are free websites. Perfect. Go there take a look around there's like thousands and thousands of photos now if you want to you can pay for certain websites as well so that you can actually get access to really great images some of these paid options are shutterstock or adobe stock or i think i just saw iStock or something like that usually they are sponsored on these types of websites so if you want to you can definitely you know pay for a membership and then you have access to those photos uh, i personally don't do that i have a, a couple of memberships on a couple of things on you know that have to do with my art or my youtube 
YouTube channel or whatever, and I'm just gonna have to make choices, right? So, and I actually did find some good photos, so I wasn't too worried about it. And I do have another option that I wanna talk about later if you can find good photos on any of these websites. The other thing you can do is check out Facebook. There's actually Facebook groups of photographers or hobby photographers, most, most of them are, that actually uh, allow you to use their photos for free. So there, you can go and look in there. I am a member of one group, but I have never pulled a photo from there. I still feel like for whatever reason, even though they post it on there and they give up their copyright, I don't wanna get into trouble later down the road if I do use their photo and they're like, oh, there's copyright on that. And um, I just wanna play it safe, but that's just my own personal approach to it. Because on the other hand, I feel like if you submit your photos to one of those groups, in the disclaimer, it will it will really clearly state that, okay, you're giving up your copyright. So I think legally, an artist, a photographer, cannot go back and say, well, but there's copyright on it if you've already uploaded the photo to that particular group. But I'm not like an expert at that. I don't use that, but it is an option. There's tons of people there. Now, the other thing you could do if you like photography, like I like photography. I've done some photography in the past. I have actually quite a decent camera and even your iPhone can take great, great photos. Take photos yourself because you own the copyright to those. You don't have to worry about permission because they're yours. Uh, we went to like, there's a farm here in town and we went there with the kids a little while ago. And I actually purposely took picture of a bunch of animals because I knew like in the future, I might use this for my, uh, for my painting. So yeah, take photos of things around you because then you don't have to worry about it. Now, if you're not a good photographer, then definitely you utilize some of these websites. But if you have a bit of an eye for photography and, or if you wanna just, you know, take a week, or if you wanna like take a week and teach yourself a little bit about some basic rules of photography, you can get some really good pictures on your phone. So there's a lot of ways to get your reference photos. You could potentially go to a museum or a gallery, but you're gonna have to ask what the protocol is for taking photos. So up to you what you wanna do with that. I have a whole like reference photo library in Canva. Here you go. I'll give you a little sneak peek here. Look at that. These are all reference photos that I've gathered over like maybe the last two, three years. And I keep adding to it um, sometimes it's a good idea to sit down for like an hour or so a week and to just type in like animals, nature, whatever, or a specific animal and look for it and pull out some reference photos off of those websites and just throw them in a reference photo library because that way you got to just save yourself such hassle. There are times where I'm like, ah, oh, what am I going to paint next? I have no idea. I go to my little reference library, reference photo library, and I take a look at all my pictures and I'm like, yeah, no. And then other times I'm like, oh, I think I'm ready to paint this. So keep adding to that. It's just gonna save you a lot of time. And you could also see here at the bottom, let's see if you can see, it says used reference photos. I keep my reference photos um, at the very last pages of my little library so that if I, for whatever reason, need to go back to that reference photo, I don't have to search the whole flipping website or I don't have to, I don't have to search the whole flipping internet to go find that photo because I kept it. I'm very much into keeping things. So there's a tip for you. Try to create a little library. I do it in Canva. You can do it in whatever program you want. Okay, so let's move on. And I have to give you a heads up. I am not a Canva guru, okay? I do have the paid version, but I have so much to learn here still. So if you can give me tips and you see me do things and you're like, whoa, I can do that faster, show me. Okay, so we started a new page. I'm gonna go to uploads and I'm gonna upload the files that I just downloaded. So there is uh, three of them. Click open, they start to download onto Canva. And I'm just gonna bring them onto this page and I'm just gonna put them side by side. I'm just gonna wanna look at them, maybe make them a little bit bigger, fill the page. It's really up to you. Okay, click on the wrong spot here. You see that these two photos are fairly similar, but I love the, the warm background on the photo on the left, but I like more of the vibrancy of the greens on that in that photo on the right. Then I throw in this one. I just have an extra one there at the bottom. I'm, I'm just trying to find a way to just like put them together. Like, I just want to look at it. I just want to get a feel for it. So I'm just going to stick them side by side. I'm kind of looking, okay, how do I want to do this? I'm just messing around right now. 
I just want to look at it and have, get a bit of an idea in my head. How, how do I want my picture to look? What do I want to do with it? And I zoom in here just to see what the photo looks like zoomed in. And I forgot to do that on the website. That is another tip is zoom in on your photo. If the quality kind of remains good, that's a good photo. If it becomes extremely blurry, not so great. But look at this. You can see the little hairs on, on the stems of the flowers. Uh, the background is beautifully out of focus. You know, it's always good to zoom in just to see that the quality does not change. And like I said, I should have done that on the website itself. But yeah, little tip. Now I decided to move that one away for now because I really wanted to work on the other two. And I thought that there was a little too much green at the bottom there. So I wanted to make the, the, the image a little bit smaller at the bottom because I thought, okay, that's too much green. I don't want like too much like dead space, I guess I call it on, on the canvas. But I really, like I said, I really liked the back. Like I really liked the out of focus background on the one photo better than the other. So I'm gonna do a little trick here. I'm gonna go to transparency and I'm gonna turn it down and look at that. Now you can see that other photo coming through. You see, I'm going back and forth. This actually, this trick of going back between transparencies, I used during the painting process a lot. When I wanted to take something from the one photo and but not from the other i kind of went back and forth so this is a really great tip you guys just overlap them now if there's any other ways that you can show me because like i said i'm not a guru in in Canva. there are so many things i don't know <laughs> but i find this helps me a lot i use that transparency on a lot of things so now i'll be messing around a little bit with the ratios and the dimensions and just moving things around to where i get it to a point where i feel okay i can work with this See, I kind of try to get it as big as possible and just, it's just kind of playing at this point. They could have been the same field, right? You see that, that they actually line up anyway. So back to putting, uh, see that I love that warm background. Okay. So now I'm going to go into elements because I wanted to add crosses in the background. So, because we're talking about fallen soldiers here and a lot of them, um, are you know, if you go to like a soldier's graveyard, there's just a lot of mostly white crosses. So I was just trying to find something that was gonna work for this. I'm gonna go white cross because that's what they are. I need a white cross there. And well, there is one a white cross, very simple. So we're gonna change it obviously, cause it's black. It wasn't a white cross, my apologies. <laughs> and, then, and then I'm gonna go and blur it because that is way too bright. It has to be in the background. It has to blend in. So we're going to blur that white cross as much as we can see. And that to me looks a lot better. So, and then I'm going to stick it in that reference photo. And I'm just like, okay, maybe this is better. Maybe this gives a better idea. And I'm just pay playing with the size and putting it in the picture. And then I'm going to copy most likely, hold on. Oh, See, oh, and then I'm gonna change the transparency. So I blurred it as much as I could, and then I actually want it to look slightly out of focus at the distance. So that's one way to do that. And then I decided to go and get a couple more and just kind of space them out. Now, the nice thing with Canva is it will tell you, hey, this is the bottom of that one. Hey, now you've got like a certain distance or the same distance between crosses. And very helpful when you're trying to space things out as good as you can. I must say, obviously this looks like weird because they look like they're floating in the field. Like obviously when I start painting, it's gonna be pushed back because the poppies are gonna be in front. I did not know how to do this in this particular photo in Canva, because if I go say to background, it'll bring it behind the picture and then the whole cross is not visible at all. So if you have a tip on how to do that, so bring that behind the poppies that are already in that photo, let me know, because I'm still learning with Canva, but this kind of gave me an idea. Like, I think I want crosses in the background to give that feel of, okay, we're remembering the fallen soldiers. We're remembering, you know, the crappiness of war, really. Okay, we're going to go to filters and see if I can change the mood a little bit in this particular photo. You just click on certain filters and see what it looks like. And like, whoa, that's a little too much. Obviously, that's not it. It's too green. That's a bit cold retro yeah no that makes it very like it, it fades away that's a little too faded this one gave it a little bit more vibrancy which i really kind of appreciated and then i'm going to compare it with nothing there's a the normal one they're like i like the zeal one 
So I went back there and I threw that on there. I kind of liked it and I brought back the intensity just a smidge. Yes, that was, I was happy with that. I realized I needed to get it into a portrait type mode. So I'm messing around trying to find the right size. So I'll be able to fast forward quickly to where I've got it. Okay, I'm gonna pull the grid from my other painting and put it on this painting. So what I did is I just went with the photo in the front and I stuck it in there. Now it's obviously very hard to see right now because the background of the eagle was a lot darker. So I'm going to um, definitely adjust that because see the transparency is way down. So now I brought it back forward. That grid is pretty obvious. Okay, I wanna see the grid. And what I'll do is I'll just copy and paste that all over the all over the photo and that's how I do a grid. You can find these grids really easily. You just go into, you know, um, elements off on the left and then you just decide, you just type in grid and you just look at the graphics usually, not photos. You go and find a grid and then you can just put it over top of your photo. So here I'm just basically putting the grid all over the place um, because I'm used to working with the grid, especially with animals. And I have to give you a, a little <laughs> Heads up, I didn't use the grid on this painting, actually. When I actually started painting, I took the grid off. I didn't use it at all. It's just a force of habit. I use it all the time. This is how I put a grid on, and I usually adjust it later on. So I just stuck it on here. What I usually do is I go to my canvas, and I'm like counting the actual squares, looking at what it might look like on my canvas, and then I adjust the squares back in Canva so that when I start to actually put the grid on, it is the same as it is in my on my digital reference photo versus what's on my canvas. If you have an easier way of doing it, let me know. Okay, I'm still not like a guru here. I haven't figured it all out. So, so all in all, I decided not to use the little soldier, soldier guy. And I also ditched the grid. Um, but I kept uh, both of the photos because I really like the photo in the background because of that warm, out of focus background that that photo had that the photo at the front does not. So once I start painting, I'm gonna try to combine the two. All right, so that is how I find reference photos. And actually, in all essence, this whole thing took me 38 minutes. And there were a couple of interruptions actually, because I was having some instructions with kids. So let's say around half an hour, it took me to put this together. Now, another thing you can do if you can't quite figure out what kind of reference photo you want, or if you just want to have a, a kind of a general idea to go with, grab any AI tool and just type in like, um, create a picture of poppies in the field with a cross in the background, a bit of a moody uh, emotion and uh, for Remembrance Day. And it will generate an image and you can do that as many times as you'd like. And then you can basically go, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, I like that idea. I mean. I'm not totally against AI. It can actually help you out with so many things. I just don't like AI to completely replace traditional artists. Like that, in my opinion, as uh, a whole other topic. So, but yeah, utilize AI just to get the creative juices going. It's totally fine, not a big deal. I've got like air trapped in my ear and it feels, I hear myself, but it feels like I'm underwater on one side of my head and it just annoys the crap out of me. Now for that little bonus thing that I mentioned earlier. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the painting and what it looks like right now um, as it is on my easel. So I'm gonna pull up that photo for you. So this is where we're at right now. I've put in the background and tried to make it as blurry as I could. And I've worked a bit on the field foreground. And right now we have the little crosses in the background and that are hopefully, uh, you know, blurry enough. But I think I might just add a little bit more detail later. I don't know yet. This is what the painting looks at right now. And I have to finish that. Um, the finished painting and the story behind that painting, it's gonna be a really good video, you guys, is gonna go up or as planned, I have it planned to go up on my channel on November 8th, so three days prior to Remembrance Day. I grew up in the Netherlands, and World War II was, is really engraved into like education. 
but my grandparents lived through that war they were teenagers and I have a few stories that I'm going to share. So I'm going to go a little bit into wh why Remembrance Day is on the 11th here in Canada, what we remember on that day, but also I'm going to go into some like personal stories from my grandparents that lived through the war, that have seen things, experienced things, and um, why Remembrance Day is so important to me. And not just to me, I believe it needs to be important to everybody. So. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any tips or tricks or other websites that you go to for reference photos, if you watch me struggle in Canva <laughs> and you have some better tips for me there, throw them in the comments, please, because I'm also here to learn. I'm not the guru. I am not the expert. I am just here to let you know how I do things. And I hope that you will find some inspiration in that. I hope you will learn something from that. But until the next video, stay happy, keep your peace, check out some of my other videos, and God bless you. Bye-bye.